I live in a normal suburban town. It was the 4th of July weekend, so I had a mini party in my backyard. My parents were away, so it would work out perfectly. I invited about 20 people. We had a pool, so I told people to bring their bathing suits. I also had some fireworks left over from last year that I told everyone we'd shoot off towards the end of the night. I tried to keep the gathering strictly in the backyard because I didn't fully trust people not to make a mess inside the house. Everything went fine. Anywhere from 20 to 30 people showed up. Everyone stayed in the yard. Some people jumped in the the pool, others played drinking games, and later in the night, we'd shoot off some fireworks in the street. The party started to die down after 12, and by 1.30 everyone was gone. There were a million red plastic cups in the yard and tons of empty cans and bottles, but that was a mess to worry about tomorrow. I was beat. I went inside and changed out of my clothes and brushed my teeth, then crawled into bed. I was pretty buzzed, so I didn't think I had any trouble falling asleep. Suddenly, outside I heard a firecracker going off. It sounded like it was right outside my window in our backyard. I got up and looked out the window, and to my confusion and downright horror, I saw a line of firecrackers going off next to our pool. My initial reaction was to yell out the window, who did that? I figured it had to be one of my friends who stayed behind pranking me. I ran down the stairs into the back door. I slid open the glass door but kept the bug screen door closed. I looked around the backyard and said again, who's out there? By now the firecrackers had finished going off. Someone was back there and they just set them off. That doesn't happen by accident. I texted as many people as I could think to and then the group chat asking who was still at my house. Only a few people answered, most likely because a lot of people were asleep. Already everyone who answered said they're in bed or are at home. I stepped outside into the backyard and looked around for a minute and when I saw no one I went back inside the house and shut the door and made sure to lock it. I went upstairs to my room. I was barely in bed for five minutes before hearing something coming from upstairs, more specifically the upstairs living room. Then I heard the sound of a beer pong ball falling off the table and bouncing on the wooden floor. My heart started to race. Was someone in the house? Did one of my friends pass out on one of the downstairs couches? Or maybe one of them in the other bedroom? While this seemed like a possibility, I wasn't about to go out there. I got out of bed and went to the door to put my ear up and listen. I didn't hear anything for a moment. I waited and then clear as day, I heard footsteps approaching my door. Then the doorknob jiggling. The door was locked. There was a loud bang on the door. I screamed through the door to get out of here. A deep male's voice on the other side said, Jay, you in there? And I heard another deep voice in the other room with me say, yeah. I turned to the corner by my drawers and realized there was someone there. I screamed my soul out as this man came over to me, holding what looked like a gun in his hand, then put his hand over my mouth and told me to shut up or he'd kill me. He then unlocked the door and opened it, and there was another masked man. They whispered to each other as they had me at gunpoint, now sitting on the bed. One of them said to me, stay right there, don't move. The other guy left the room and went straight to my parents' room. He came back and asked the combinations to my parents' safe, which I said I had no idea, which was the truth. There was a total of three intruders in the house. One kept me at gunpoint, while the other two Clifford the house, stealing my mom's jewellery that was left out along with the other valuables they found. After the longest 10 minutes of my life, one of the men yelled let's go and the man who had me at gunpoint left the room and I heard them all hurry out the back door. I tried to see what kind of car they left in through a window but it appeared they didn't park anywhere near my house. I called 911 right away and as soon as police arrived they asked if I had any cameras around the house which we didn't. Then they asked if I got any names or saw any of their faces, and all I could give them was that one of them was referred to Jay by the others. They asked if I saw the getaway vehicle and I said no. The police asked a bunch of neighbouring houses if they had cameras that they may have picked up on the robbers and after my neighbours all reviewed their doorbell cameras, none of them picked up anything. I think my house was targeted by a group who saw I was having a party and they set the firecrackers off to lead me outside of the house so they could sneak in. That's the most likely explanation to me. My parents were living with me for having the party as they believed that led to the robbery but they were also relieved that I'm okay and they were sympathetic that I had to experience this. Because of this experience I'm a strong advocate for having security cameras around your house. It was 4th of July 2015. The park by my house was having their annual firework show, but it was always getting too crowded and chaotic, plus parking is non-existent. Little did most people know, there's a little slump next to the park that I had a perfect view of the firework show. I found this through one of my friends one year. 
This sump was accessible through one of the dead-end residential streets that ran alongside the park. Since the 4th was on Saturday this year, it would probably be even more crowded, but it will also make a perfect date. I was talking to this girl Ashley I met in one of my classes the previous semester, and we'd already had a few dates over the course of the few months. I asked her if she wanted to go to the fireworks show with me, and she said she already wanted to, so absolutely. She came to my house first and then walked from my house to the park since it was so close, and we were bringing alcohol. I told her we'd have our own little private spot to watch the show, and no one else really knew about it, and she said she was super down along with some tequila and soda. I brought a big blanket for us to lay on in my backpack. There was already a lot of commotion by the park entrance. We walked right past it as the cars were piling up in the parking lot. We continued down the dead end where the sump was. The sump was rectangular and fenced off, but it was really easy to get inside. The gate wasn't even locked inside the sump. It was just a bunch of trees and then the bottom of it had a small grass clearing where we planned to lay out the blanket. I led us to the gate which yet again wasn't locked and I quietly opened and closed it. I told her to be careful as we walked downhill into the sump. It was around 8 o'clock, which was when the fireworks were supposed to start. I laid out the blanket on the smoothest part of the ground. I didn't take into account how dark it was before the fireworks started, so we both turned on our phone flashlights and laid them down, just as temporary lights. We started making tequila sodas right away. From down in the sump, we couldn't really hear any other people from up in the park, just the occasional cars honking. It was just right around the time we started the first drink that both of us heard something behind us. It was like the sound of a bush being stepped on. We turned around to see darkness. I pointed my flashlight over there but it didn't really reach that far. The iPhones back then were like the sixes. I don't remember the flashlights being the best. Ashley asked me how likely it was that other people would come down here. I replied that other than a couple of my friends knowing about it, I doubt anyone else would come down. I explained to her that it could have been a small animal. The first fireworks were shot into the air which startled us. The fireworks would light up the entire sump, briefly though, especially the bigger ones. At this point we drank and watched the fireworks for a solid few minutes, before again I heard something behind us. I don't think Ashley heard it but she looked back when I looked back, and she asked what I was looking at. I said nothing, not wanting to scare her. This was my idea after all, but now I'm starting to get paranoid. I decided to turn around and stare into the trees and bushes, and as the sump lit up again from multiple big fireworks exploding. I saw a black figure standing in the trees and bush above us. They appeared to be hiding. I whispered there's someone up there. She turned and looked but now it went dark again because there was a short few second gap in the fireworks. When the sump lit up again, the figure I saw wasn't there anymore. I surely freaked her out though because she said she wanted to leave since we were both definitely creeped out. We agreed to leave while the fireworks were still going, lighting the sump up. I packed up the blanket and the alcohol and of course the fireworks show ended right there. It was now dark and quiet in the sump, so we turned our flashlights back on and walked up the hill. As we neared the top, I couldn't help but shine my flashlights into the trees and the general vicinity that I saw that figure before, and I felt my heart skip a beat, seeing a black figure again, maybe 10 feet away. It appeared to be a person in a black hoodie or a robe with a hood up. Even though it was like an 82 degree night, they were standing behind a big tree, but then as if in a response to the light, they started to run through the bush at us. I pushed Ashley along to hurry up as I yelled to go. We got the hell out of there and basically ran down the street until we were around other people. We weren't followed. I'm not sure what the person was doing in there, but it seemed like they were stalking us the entire fireworks show, and them running towards us meant they wanted to hurt us. I saw only one person, so I believe they were alone, but I could be wrong. I stayed clear from going in that sump ever again.